Hey everybody, welcome back, and we're going to read about growing functions. But first, I'm going to complain a little bit about Eloquent JavaScript, and why beginners in particular complain about it as well. I don't like this function as an introductory, recursive, uh, let's say, you know, uh, what would you call it, like teaching tool. Why on earth would we need to also figure out whatever this is? This is not something that most people have ever seen before. So in addition to trying to figure out recursion, which is a very tricky concept the first couple of times through, we're also going to try to figure out whatever this is, some history-taking string, which I've never seen before. I think it would probably be a better idea if they presented a solution that people could understand in some capacity, such that it was easier to understand just the recursive part, rather than having to try to understand recursion and whatever this history thing is. But that said, there's tons of different ways to teach things, and this is probably effective for tons of people, and it's well written, perfectly indented, as we recall from last lesson, and, you know, it does get the job done, and perhaps it's good to stretch yourself. So, there's my complaint, and the, you know, probably why that complaint doesn't matter. So, growing functions, let's read. There are two more or less natural ways for functions to be introduced into programs. The first is that you find yourself writing similar code multiple times. You'd prefer not to do that. Having more code means more space for mistakes to hide and more material to read for people trying to understand the program. Excuse me. So you take the repeated functionality, find a good name for it, and put it into a function. The second way is that you find you need some functionality that you haven't written yet and that sounds like it deserves its own function. You'll start by naming the function and then you'll write its body. You might even start writing code that uses the function before you actually define the function itself. Um, I've heard people describe this as wishful programming, and that's also a relatively common term. So I'm going to put that into our vocab list. Wishful programming. You might even start writing code that uses the function before you actually define the function itself. Again, not great definitions, but they're references, so it's okay. How difficult it is to find a good name for a function is a good indication of how clear a concept it is that you're trying to wrap. Let's go through an example. Uh, we want to write a program that prints two numbers, the numbers of cows and chickens on a farm with the words cows and chickens after them and zeros padded before both numbers so that they are always three digits long. 007 cows, 011 chickens. This asks for a function of two arguments. Again, it's things like this that kind of bug me because it doesn't ask for a function of two arguments. It asks for a function of two parameters because if we're defining the function, surely we're talking about parameters, not arguments. But that's okay. The number of cows and the number of chickens. Let's get coding. And that's the other problem, right? Because perhaps the argument against my little editorializing, uh, you know, whining session is that, well, they're not describing the parameters. They're describing the actual numbers of cows and chickens. So they're describing the arguments. So leave us alone. Well, you know, fair enough. So let's get coding in either way. Function print farm inventory takes cows and chickens parameters. Uh, let cow string equal string cows. Okay, that's that function that takes a string, sorry, takes a number and is going to make a string version of it. While cow string dot length is less than three, cow string is equal to the zero string plus the current cow string. Okay, so that makes sense. Um, and that's going to keep looping here until, so if it's 9, it's going to add a 0 in front of it. The length will be less than 3, so we'll add another 0 in front of it, so we'll get 0, 0, 9. Console.log, interpolating the value of cow string into our nice little interpolation, um, and we output, well, we, you know, console.log the number of, of cows. Same exact thing for the chickens, and then we say print farm inventory was 7, 11, so let's go ahead and make sure that it works. Um, we'll change this to 89. We'll change this to... 111. Let's change this to that many. Ah, so it's not completely unbreakable, but it's pretty close. Excellent. Uh, writing dot length after a string expression will give us the length of that string. Thus, the while loop keeps adding zeros in front of the number strings until they are at least three characters long. Mission accomplished. But just as we were about to, just as we are about to send the farmer, the. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, but just as we are about to send the farmer the code, along with a hefty invoice, she calls and tells us she's also started keeping pigs. And couldn't we please extend the software to also print pigs? Uh, get used to this. Nothing says coding or programming or software engineering like a user deciding at the moment of delivery that they need 50% more than what they originally asked for. <clears throat> 
Anyway, we sure can, because that's always the answer. Um, but just as we're in the process of copying and pasting those four lines one more time, we stop and consider there has to be a better way. Here's a first attempt. And what they're talking about is this is the first example where it's this code here and this code here are virtually identical with a few quick exceptions. Um, this one's called chicken string and this one called, is called cow string. Uh, that's immaterial, right? Because we could call that animal string. <clears throat> uh, rather than chickens, we would want to call them cows. And rather than cow string, we want chicken string. And then this part with the constant log at the end would be cows versus chickens. So surely there's a way for this code to be its own function, which I hope is what they're about to tell us. A function print zero padded with label, number and label. So the first one had cows and chickens. This one has number and a label. So, mm, ah, okay, so that's the inner function. So, print zero padded with label is going to be the number and the label. Uh, let number string equal string of the number, so that's the number of whatever animal we have, while the number string is less than three, blah, 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 and then label. So this is going to be cow or chicken or pigs or whatever. Function print farm inventory with cows, chicken, and pigs. So we're going to print zero padded with label for cows which is going to be you know, each of the parameters or the arguments that this function is called with, and then the label for each one of them. And then we print farm inventory, and we get those. Uh, the cool part is, is that if we wanted to, mm, we could change this to say something like uh, dogs. Make it dogs, and we have three dogs now. Kind of odd to think of a dog as part of the farm inventory, but I've heard a lot of farmers describe their dogs as being almost a piece of equipment or like a, like a laborer in, in, in the idea that they're, you know, extraordinarily useful and, you know, a valued member of the squad. So anyway, <clears throat> excuse me, it works, but with that name, print zero padded with label is a bit awkward. It conflates three things, print, printing, zero padding, and adding a label into a single function. Instead of lifting out the repeated part of our program wholesale, let's try to pick out a single concept, function zero pad. Number and width, let string equal number width, while string.length is less than the width, string is equal to zero plus the string, return the string. So rather than having you know print zero and label all together, we're going to try to separate those into individual concepts, it's, it appears. Uh, print farm inventory, zero pad. Uh, okay, this seems pretty good. We run it, we get the same story. With code like this, read through it. If you're having difficulty, write pseudocode for it. So we'll say initialize a string version of the number parameter. While that string is less than desired width, prepend. Prepend is basically a way to say put something at the beginning of another thing. So prepend the string, uh, we'll say to be the result. And then while that result string, uh, prepend the result string with a zero, and then return the result string. In case you're curious how you go back to the beginning of a line like that, you can hold command on a Mac OS operating system and hit a directional key. It'll take you to the farthest point on that direction that you can go in the text editor. Um, I have to imagine it's just control when you're on a Windows. Okay, <clears throat> a function with a nice obvious name like zero pad makes it easier for someone who reads the code to figure out what it does. And such a function is useful in more situations than just this specific program. For example, you could use it to help print nicely aligned tables of numbers. And what they mean by that is that the width here is three, but let's say that we had, um, we're adding up the, the, you know, the inventory of an entire like legion of farms. And so the numbers are gonna start to get rather big. So we want there to be five numbers for everyone because at the highest inventory, there's something like 10,000, I don't know, years of corn or whatever. And so in that case, our tables can remain nice and aligned as opposed to it being, you know, some of them are smaller or bigger. And, and that's what they mean about being a little bit more flexible. Uh, so how smart and versatile should our function be? We could write anything from a terribly simple function that can only pad a number to be three characters wide to a complicated generalized number formatting system that handles fractional numbers, negative numbers, alignment of decimal dots, padding with different characters, and so on. A useful principle is to not add cleverness unless you are absolutely sure you are going to need it. It can be tempting to write general frameworks for every bit of functionality you come across. Resist that urge. 
you won't get any real work done. You'll just be writing code that you never used. Um, yeah, fair point. Okay, so uh, I don't see a lot of definitions or functions that I want to really add. I think this is more of just like a conceptual idea of rowing functions. Uh, so we'll leave it here. Thanks for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.